Hi, once again, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. Um, welcome to uh, lesson number two in our series, uh, How to Love Someone That You Hate. Uh, and the title of this uh, lesson is God's Strategy. God's Strategy. Well, last time in our last lesson, I asked you to visualize three people or institutions, if that's the case, that you couldn't stand. You know, the individuals that you had trouble with, who had hurt your feelings or whatever it was, uh, I asked you to uh, not put their names down, but to on your list, one, two, three, um, to give some details as to um, you know, why uh, you felt this way about this individual, or what happened to cause this, uh, this, this hatred or this dislike that you have for this uh, person. Um, uh, let's see, now most people listed the things or the reasons why you couldn't stand uh, that individual next to the number, right? I asked you to give some details. What happened, what was the cause of uh, the separation between you and perhaps a friend or uh, your spouse or a family member or whatever it was. Um, you also sat in groups uh, sharing the various problems or issues that you had with these people uh, in an effort to uh, learn how to share our burden, to break the ice, uh, to get to know the people in your uh, small group. This week, I want you again to visualize these people, and this time you're biggie. Remember I said you have three, but usually there's one individual, one situation that really is causing you a lot of heartburn, a lot of ache. Uh, this week we're going to look at that one. And um, uh, once you've done that, once you've kind of imagined who that person is, I want you to understand that this person is not the problem. This person is not the problem. Your enemy or that person that you can't stand is not the problem and neither are you the problem or your feelings the problems. Now, th these are not the core of the, of the problem. The core of the problem is explained by Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. When I say the core of the problem, the problem being I am in a conflict with another person. I can't stand this person. I hate this person, okay? The problem is not uh, that person. The problem is not you either. Paul says the following. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so, the problem that we have is with the evil that is displayed in other people, not necessarily the person themselves. Satan uses the evil in the world, the evil in other, purple, uh, other people's lives to attack us, to hurt us, to discourage us, and to separate us from other people, and most importantly, to keep it that way. He uses the evil in individuals to break relationships and to keep those relationships uh, broken. So our problem, uh, the thing that we can't stand, is usually not the person, but the evil that the person does, especially as it affects us. Since the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the potential for us to be annoyed or offended or hurt by others is, is rather great. And the chance that we also do this to other people is also very great. I mean, I often say, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, in the church, they're always looking for perfect, per, uh, perfect relationships, perfect harmony. They figure, wow, if somebody hurts your feelings in the church, that's a terrible thing. It ought never to happen, you know, because why well, aren't Christians supposed to be perfect? And I remind them that uh, as the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody is a sinner. Uh, I remind the congregation that um, sinners are all that we have in the church. There, there are no perfect people in the church in the sense that there's no individual that never sins. So imagine if you have a, a church group uh, uh, that, that, that is three, four, five hundred people, you have 500 sinners grouped together in one group. 
There's bound to be trouble when that happens. There's bound to be hurt feelings. There's bound to be evil that is done from time to time that uh, uh, harms another or breaks a, a, a relationship. The question therefore is this, what do we do about the evil in other people that makes us hate them, that makes us dislike them so much? Now, if our focus changes from the person to the evil that the person does, then this is usually a pretty good first step. Our next problem is what to do about this evil. How do we lessen our dislike because of this evil? Well, in the passage that Paul gives in Romans 12 verses 14 to 21, remember that was the passage that I asked for you to, to read every day, hopefully commit to memory eventually if you keep reading it over and over again. Well, Paul in this passage summarizes by giving us the answer to this dilemma. He says the following, do not be overcome by evil, overcome evil with good. Chapter 12, verse 21. And so much of this small group course that we're doing here is based on this premise that dealing with people that we can't stand or hate requires us to overcome the evil in them that creates this animosity, that creates this separation. Now, most counseling that a person will receive when it comes to dealing with someone that we can't stand, most secular counseling, will help us use two strategies. Uh, either you know, the fight strategy uh, how to fight the person with tactics that will overpower them or neutralize them or punish them, or the flight, you know, fight or flight, the flight strategy. If we don't wish to fight, then we're taught how to run away, how to find shelter, how to purge that person and the hurt out of our minds and consequently uh, out of our lives. Of course, that doesn't really work, does it? They're always there, right? I tell people who are going through a divorce, you know, they think divorce is the easy way. I'll get them out of my life and that's it. And I remind them, well, you may divorce them uh, legally. Uh, you know, you're separated from them uh, through the divorce, but they're never really out of your life. You, you, you may be out of the marriage, but they're not out of your life, okay? So people we can't stand always have a way of being in our life in one way or another. God, on the other hand, so you have the fight and flight strategy. God, on the other hand, uh, offers us a third way, and it is called aggressive good. Uh, we don't fight evil with evil, uh, nor do we run away from it. Uh, rather, we overcome evil with good. Now, to overcome means to win. God wants us to win over evil with good. This is the victory that we as Christians are looking for. The strategy works better than fight or flight for two reasons. Number one, good is more powerful than evil. Uh, John says in his epistle, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse four, uh, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Now, because we're sinners, it is always tempting to return evil for evil. And because we are weak, it is tempting to run away from evil. Returning good for evil is superior because goodness essentially is more powerful, has more ability to impact and change than evil. When you return good for evil, you prove who is the stronger and better person. And then number two, God's strategy is superior because we want to destroy evil, not create more of it. You see, uh, doing evil puts you on the wrong side of God and it joins you to the forces of Satan, no matter what the provocation. Even if you lose the battle by returning good for evil, the war against evil is strengthened because by your sacrifice in one area with one person, you are reducing the overall amount of evil in the world. And this is good. So sometimes you lose the battle, but you win the war. You're contributing to winning the war 
uh, uh, between good and evil. Okay, so that's our lesson portion of this uh, series. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you to uh, break into uh, uh, your small discussion groups. And I'm going to give you some discussion questions now that you can use uh, to uh, continue your discussion on this topic. And usually the way that folks do this is uh, you, uh, you will read one of the questions that you'll see uh, on the screen. You can pause that and then take the time that you need for your groups to discuss that uh, question. When you're ready, when all uh, the people are ready to continue, just hit the play button and the next question will appear and uh, so on and so forth. There are four discussion questions. All right, uh, we'll see you next time. Question number one, what strategy do you normally use with those you cannot stand? Fight or flight? Explain. Question number two, how is overcoming evil with good an aggressive action rather than a passive action? Question number three, describe a situation in the world or in the church where overcoming evil with good could be applied to solve a conflict. Question number four, Describe a situation in your life where this has been or should be done to resolve a conflict. 